Well, it says that we're live. I hope you can hear me. It suggests that you can. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get started. So, um, hi, I'm Nicole with so much more and I am going to be quilting. I'm going to do some straight line quilting on um, a quilt that I'm working on. I've already marked my little notches. I'm using my, let me just show you, I'm using my Juki TL2010Q sewing machine. I have my Sew Steady Versa table. It didn't come with a machine, um, but I added this as an accessory. This grid glider comes with it, um, with the Versa table. And so um, now I have a really big sewing surface, which I love. And let's see what else. I'm going to try to get in here and see if I can. Okay. So um, I also, let me get this other camera in here. I also have, let's see. All right. This is kind of shaky. I also have this uh, quilting bar attachment on here. Okay. So I've got my walking foot, which comes with the TL2010Q standard. And then I have this guide bar attachment that is going to help me keep my lines straight, if that makes sense. Hi from Idaho. Hello, thanks for joining. Okay, so that's that's what's going on right here. Okay, and like I said, I do have, let me switch here. I do have my quilt already started. Like I've done a lot of straight line already, but I do have this bit to finish right here. You know what? I forgot to wind my bobbin. Darn it. I was going to do that before I started this video. I might as well show you how easy it is to do that. People are so concerned that, you know, once you have this, this little sticky thing on here that you can't get access to your bobbin. Um, Hi, Joy from Arizona. You can't get access to your bobbin, but you can actually. Let me switch over here so you can see. See? No problem. Access. Not a problem. I'm going to use both my hands though, so I'm going to switch my cameras real quick. Alright. So I'm going to grab my bobbin out of here. And I believe, yes, it's empty. Alright, so I'm going to wind. I'm going to get some thread on here real quick. I'm sure that's what you wanted to watch is somebody to wind a bobbin, right? I do like to have my bobbin thread ready to go so I don't have to like unthread. My top thread is, I don't even remember the number. They're both Aurifil 50 weight, but the top thread is kind of blends with the top and the bottom thread really matches well with the bottom. Ooh, I need more light. Okay, there we go. Speaking of light, I do have, um, I don't know if you can tell, I do have my um, Daylight Slimline 3 on my sewing table right here. It's, it's a really great light. I'll flip this around so you can see how incredibly bright it is. But it really does help light things up. Okay, I'm going to, is my machine on? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Can you hear me with all that racket going on? I'm sorry. I should have had this wound before, but I just wanted to go ahead and pop on here. I hope everyone's having a good night. Gaming with Nathan and Ethan Games. Hello from Fort Worth, Texas. Hello from... Fo I used to live in Grapevine. I love Fort Worth. I have family... Whoa. That lives in Denton and Aurora. Cool. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and just load this back in. Where did my scissors go? I don't know. I'm going to use this. Okay. Get that thread out of the way. All right. So I'm just going to load my bobbin, move this mat out of the way while I put this bobbin back in. Like I said, it's folks were 
one of the most popular questions about this mat is, you know, how do you load your bobbin? Well, you just lift it up, pop it in, and there you go. I've lifted this thing up so many times it, you know, you sometimes you worry if it's going to get unsticky, but it really isn't a problem because it wipes right off. And my needle came unthreaded. I'm going to re-thread this using my automatic threader real quick. See if I can do that. I've got a whole bunch of stuff going on down here with my... Oh, I can't do it with my bar in the way, can I? Oh, bummer. Oh, no, I can. Thank goodness. Alright, there we go. Gotta love a needle threader. Alright, now that we have everything threaded, for heaven's sakes, I'm going to go ahead and I, I ended right here. I didn't realize, realize that I was running out of bobbin. So I'm going to get myself back there. But first I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to fold this up a little bit. Because it's, it's not a huge quilt. But I want to kind of get it out of my way. So I'm going to kind of fold it and fold it so that it'll fit easily in the throat area of my sewing machine. Right? This is where I'm going to be sewing. So I think I've got that pretty much out of the way. That's given me enough room. All right, go back to the sewing machine. See if I can scoot up without tripping over my quilt. Okay. So I do have my guide bar down. And I tried making these notches spaced evenly. And so the idea here is to line your needle up with the notch mark. I'm going to go ahead and put that down and then my guide bar is right on the seam that I just made and let me let me give you a closer view to that see here's the here's the little notch mark that I made um, see I used a little ruler and I made little notches and then I just made little notches okay so I did that and then I'm going to line this up and as I sew, and I've got like a three seam allowance, as I sew, I'm just going to keep this guide bar along this seam right here so that, um, oh, for heaven's sakes. Sorry, my kid was calling me. Um, I'm just going to keep going this way. All right, let me switch back to this shot here. I need to, oh my gosh. JD, I'm trying to do a live video. I'm doing a live video. I'm going to call you later. No, I'm doing a live video. Okay, I don't even know if that worked or not. I'm sorry. It was an emergency Dairy Queen request. Okay, so I'm going to put my needle down keep it down there so I can readjust myself. I need to plug m this this camera in or my close-up shots aren't going to work anymore because this camera is about to die. All right. Let me just kind of get this all on top of me here. I don't know if you can, you probably can't see this, but I'm pretty much wearing this quilt right now. Just getting it on top of me because I want to lift as much of the weight off of the floor so it kind of floats, right? Okay, so let's go back here. So it, this is super easy. You just sew a straight line. But you know what? I don't want to be right there. I, like I said, I met my thread, my bobbin ran out right here. So I'm going to start right here where my bobbin ran out. And I'm still lined up with my bar, my guide bar right there. All right situated I think 
All right. I'm going to move this over. I'm kind of choked up in the throat here. Now, one of the things I have to worry about is my quilt hitting the wall back there. So when it gets up to the wall, I'm going to start folding things out of the way. All right. I can feel resistance at the needle, and that's because I'm hitting the wall, so I'm just going to fold it over and back again. Kind of just letting it rest on my table. I do some little managing of the quilt here. All right, and obviously my needle's in the down position. There we go. Now I could go a lot faster than this, but what I found is that when I go too fast, I can get some puckers. I'm hitting the wall again, so I'm just going to pull this forward and rest it. So I'm kind of making a quilt, uh, <laughs> like a little a quilt co cozy here. Typically, when I quilt a quilt, I like to, to do uh, free motion quilting. Um, like a simple meander I find is super fast and I have a um, a sit down long arm that makes it super fast right so you don't have to struggle with the the throat space but I thought this this quilt was kind of a modern quilt so I wanted to do some straight line quilting and I hit the wall again so I'm gonna pull this back get it up out of the way There we go. All right, so I've come to the end. Now I have several more passes to make, but that's looking pretty good. Let's look at those stitches a little closer. Hmm, that's kind of a blown out. Sorry, that's the exposure on that super bright. Okay, there we go. So there's there's a closer look at the stitches. That turned out nice. And then, see how the back thread? Can't even tell. Right? That looks really nice. I love the tension on this machine. Alright, I need to... Um, does, does anybody have any questions while I'm working on this? Just let me know. Don't be shy. Alright, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this all back and line it up with the next notch. So I'm using my knee lift and I'm lining up where my needle would fall right onto the next mark. And then um, because I've evenly spaced this out and my bar's pretty much set up with the amount of distance that I have already notched. So... I don't need to adjust this. If I did need to adjust this bar, there are some things that I can do. can swing this arm either way. I can move the, the whole mechanism along the bar on the back. And I can even take this whole thing off and put it on the other side. There's lots of options. I've, I've really enjoyed working with this. I think that even though straight line quilting is a process like it takes a lot longer than free motion quilting i'm i'm enjoying the results all right let me this uh this quilt is made with drunkard's path quilt blocks there's uh, some half square triangles. See, there's half square triangles here. 
and there is um, just some half squares or two rectangles together. I've used uh, fabric from Painter's Palette from Paintbrush Studio. I, I love their solids. They are amazing. And so th this quilt is made with all of their solids. Not all of them, but I'm trying to think how many different colors I have in here. It's kind of an, it's kind of a rainbow quilt with the Roy G. Biv. When I'm done, I'll have to post a picture of it on my Instagram. Still have binding to do. I'm not sure what kind of binding I'm going to use. Now, of course, I could have used my uh, J350. I think I can probably show you what that looks like. Let's see. So my J350 is, this is my um, long arm quilting machine. It's on a table right now, and it's holding a whole bunch of t-shirts that need to become a t-shirt quilt soon. Uh, but it has a nice throat space. It, I think it's either 18 inches or 20 inches. I can't remember off the top of my head. But it's on a table right now. It can go onto a frame, and one day it will when I have room in my home for a frame. So, um, but for now, the reason I didn't do straight line quilting on this quilt and I chose to do it on my TL2010Q is uh, because, you know, this is a longer quilt than the length of this table. See, the length of the table. So I thought I would probably get better results of straight line quilting if I just use this guide attachment instead of using my ruler foot and hoping for the best on my my tabletop long arm. So anyway, I'll go, I'm sorry for all of the switching cameras around and stuff. Let me go ahead and switch back to our view here. I'll continue quilting. There we go. Move that back out of the way. So I was <coughs> wanting to get this done last night, but it was taking longer than I had anticipated, but I do want to get it done tonight. Tomorrow is, I'm starting a new, well it's not new, it's the second release of T-Shirt Quilt Academy starting tomorrow, and that course is opening up again. It's an online course that I have on my website. And I want to have this quilt done, and at least quilted. I can work on the binding later. I want to have this kind of out of the way so I can make room for the next t-shirt quilt that I'll be putting together. The t-shirt quilt academy that's coming up, we're going to be doing a sew along of making a t-shirt quilt. And the first week is going to be about preparing the t-shirts. That's probably one of the biggest questions I always get is how do I do that? So I can't wait to get into those details starting tomorrow. But like I said, I haven't, I haven't decided on the binding for this yet. I do like striped binding, but I think that that might be a little busy for this quilt. You know, there's already, already so much going on. I might just do black. Or possibly gray. I don't know. I'm going to have to 
let's see about all that. There we go. Can't really tell what I'm doing here. Should I zoom in? Can I do that? I don't know if I can. Oh, I can. Look at that. Hmm. Okay. Maybe that's better. Pull that quilt. If I remember correctly, I think this quilt measured... It's a square quilt, so it's, I think it was like around 60 by 60. So it's not a huge quilt, but it'll cover a lap. I'm mostly getting this done uh, for a presentation I'm making. And I'd like to have it done and bound for that. Won't that be nice? Okay, next line. There we go. So I got the f the needle in the down position ready to go. I'm just putting this quilt on top of me. There we go. Kind of rolling it up loosely so that I can have it go. <laughs> so awkward. <laughs> Hi, Janice from Man Montana. I hope it's not as hot there as it is here. There we go. I had to... I'm having to water all of the flowers real good every morning because it is... Well, I mean, it's still 90 degrees and it's... What is it? It's about... 6.30 p.m. here in Kansas City. I need to do two more stripes and then I need to go to the kitchen because I have a, um, a meatloaf in the oven. And I still have to make the glaze that goes on it. My husband said that he doesn't want it tasting like ketchup. So I have to... Um, I think the recipe that I found... The recipe that was in my cookbook said a quarter cup of ketchup, two tablespoons of brown sugar, and then some dry mustard, powdered mustard, something like that. I don't know. I need to make it taste less like ketchup and more like brown sugar, says Troy. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know. Oh, getting nice rain. Send some our way. That way I don't have to uh, water the, the flowers. I love it. All right, this is probably going to be my last pass. Okay, I'm hitting the wall here. Not making much progress on that. I have to move that up out of the way. There we go. What a difference it makes when I, when I get that off the wall. That's what I love about these big tables you know these these big tables l allow me to have um you know a lot of room to lay this quilt while i'm working so okay just keep adjusting, right? That's what you do when you're quilting on your domestic, is just keep adjusting. I'll be glad when I have this bound because all of this black fabric collects the lint from my batting and it's just like, oh, I need to take a lint roller to this thing, but it would be like brushing your teeth with while you're chewing Oreos, right? It would just not be worth the hassle until it's all bound.
All right. You know, I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do one more pass right there in the middle, and then I'll, well, no, I probably, I just looked at the clock. I should probably go check the meatloaf because I don't want to burn it. And um, I still have to make the potatoes, which are in like a microwave-safe thing. So like little new potatoes, I can put them in the microwave. I've not tried it before, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, thanks you, thanks you guys for um, hanging out with me and uh, watching me quilt with my new uh, foot attachment. It's I, I like it. I was using it. I'm going to get it close up here. I was using it all night. Well, I, I probably quilted till midnight, but I was using it till then. It's doing a really good job. I like how I can adjust things easily. I like it. I think it's called a guide bar for my Juki 2010Q. I got it from my local dealer. So if you have one of these machines and you want to try doing that, you might want to try getting one of, the, one of those attachments. It's pretty cool. So anyway, if you enjoyed hanging out with me, uh, like this video and share it with your sewing friends. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Bye. I've got to figure out how to end the video. in the stream.